Will a high gain Omni overshoot nearby miners? Keep it simple, keep it real. If I keep it simple, I would say no. The internet though doesn't agree with me and the internet says yes, be careful, don't go for high gain Omni antennas or you will overshoot the nearby guys and you won't get a connection with the nearby hotspots. What's the point of making a video if you don't challenge the idea? So that's the purpose of this video is to explain why I say no, that's not really going to happen. Um, so the topics that I have here is first of all, obviously, will a high gain Omni overshoot nearby miners? The first thing is no. Miners can't really be closer than 300 meters to each other anyway. So you, unfortunately, I will have to bring in trigonometry. Um, I have to do a little bit of physics here. So bear with me. I'm warning you already. I'm going to do some maths just to show you what it is. But it's graphical. It's very easy to understand. The second thing is, no, nah, nearby miners don't need the high gain performance. What I just want to explain, and I'll just go into the antenna theory of what's going on here again, that... The antenna is obviously showing low again if you have this thing over elevation. I'll go into that a little bit more detail just shortly. If you go on, on the horizon, that's where the maximum gain is. But if, if you look on a lower level, so basically the, the other angles, it has much lower gain. But those miners will inevitably be much closer. So they don't need that much gain because they are closer already. So there's another thing. Now I know with... Um, uh, losses, signal propagation issues and reflections and so forth. There is always a challenge. So that is one side of it that that could be a problem, but that needs to be assessed per specific application. So if you are concerned about overshooting, let's see what I could show you. And then of course, the last one is a few questions there. Will a high gain antenna make a difference? Yes, it will. Now the first thing is EIRP, that emitted radiated power that's limited by country or regional specifics. In Australia it's 30 dBm, in Europe it's 30 dBm, but in the US it's higher. The miners, the helium hotspots will actually cap you. So they can't specifically, or they won't allow you to go higher than the maximum for a specific region. So it's almost like, get yourself a high gain Omni, the helium hotspot will need to account for that and make some adjustments. So that's part of it that's already sorted. The thing where it's going to make a huge difference is on the receiver side. So receiver sensitivity directly benefits from better antennas. You have this whole path between you and the other guy. If you have a better antenna, your transmission to him, that level is fixed. It's going to be what it is, 30 dBm in Australia for instance. But if you have a better antenna, your ability to receive what that guy is transmitting is better by that much because of the better antenna. And it's a passive improvement, passive meaning the antenna doesn't add power, doesn't do anything complicated, it only helps with the pure physics. That's what you want, that's the best thing there is, and that's the beauty of antennas and part of the reason why I really love the um, specific stuff. Um, so, of course, before I get into that, if you want to see more of the stuff, if you want to actually suggest other topics that I can discuss, not just for helium mining, but also back on the, um, the 4G and 5G work that is really awesome and important to us, the Wi-Fi work that's also important, subscribe to this channel, like this video, please. And if you have any suggestions, let me know. All right, but let's get into it. The first thing, as I mentioned earlier, what is 3 dB elevation beam width? Now, this is a number that you probably would see on the antennas, and everybody seems to be thinking 5.8 is the number that needs to be used. 5.8 is just somehow the first antenna that got the best results was 5.8, 5, 5 and that's the number that gets used. But what does it mean? There's an Omni antenna. Um, if you see that picture that I have, the diagram that I have on the screen here, um, on the horizon, that's where the peak value will be. So at the, at the horizon itself, you'll get your number that says there, say peak of 5.8. I'm just hypothetically thinking about that typical um, number. Do keep in mind that as an antenna company, antenna engineer, 5.8, I, I don't take it with a grain of salt, a pinch of salt. I do accept that's the value, but I also am realistic that there are losses in the connector, maybe in the cable, there might be some soldering um, deviations. So 5.8, I expect would be the peak value that I can expect, but I'm probably thinking realistically, it's probably more like 5.3 or 0.5 dB lower. Um, and that's only on the horizon. Now, if I say this thing has 50 degree beam width, which is what you will see on the data sheets for that type of number. So it means this thing is going, it has a 50 degree, uh, oh, yeah, let's make that like an elevation view. So 50 degrees, 25 up and 25 down from the horizon, I still get a good signal. 
it doesn't tell me I'm getting 5.8 dB gain there to there. It tells me that's 5.8 on the horizon. It's 3 dB lower at 2.8 dB basically. That's at 25 degree plus, 25 degree minus. So there's 2.8 dB at the bottom and at the top and then it goes stronger and weaker. So that's basically the bubble that you can expect with these kind of antennas. So just to explain, that's, that's the concept and that's what's happening there. Um, now why would I say that high gain antennas, something beast like this, doesn't fit on the screen. It doesn't even fit on the screen. It's huge, this thing. That type of antenna, which has 8 dB gain, I see a lot of comments online saying that don't even bother, it's going to overshoot. You need to see exactly what the setup is. And I'm just going to say the, the, the general approach to say it's going to overshoot. No, no, no. Um, think carefully before you think this is too high gain. Now, of course, as I said earlier, if you are in a highly condensed area in the middle of city and you are actually not at the top level, um, yeah, there's a problem. And if you have a lot of users that are right there on the ground underneath you, there's a problem. There you need to look for lower gain antenna. So if you're in the middle of a metropolitan city and you're up, um, at 100 stories or whatever. No, you don't want an antenna that doesn't look down. But if you're in suburbia, if you're just in general suburbia place, the calculation that I show there is actually what's important. So just want to show you, this is just basic trigonometry. That's the math, so it's not that hard actually. If you are 10 meters high, so if you put your antenna 10 meters into the air from ground level, at 25 degree, which is basically the, the 5 dB gain, for 50 degrees, then 25 like this, then goes down, is 21.5 meters away. So your beam hits the ground at 21.5 meters away. Now I chose 10 meters because that's an easy one to calculate. So you are potentially um, 100 meters high. I don't know, you might be 100 meters high. If you use a 5.8 dBi antenna, which has a 50 degree beam with as the little example that I have here on the screen, it's 200 meters away. So you're 100 meters up, 200 meters away, that's where your beam hits the ground. Thinking that the helium recommends 300 meters spacing between the hotspots, that's it, you're fine. Right, but if you go for 8 dB, this is where actually the question comes in. So what happens with 8 dB? And that's kind of in the 20 degree beam width area. So you have a 20 degree elevation beam width up down is then 10 degrees. So 10 degrees up, 10 degrees down. Again, going for the same calculation. 10 meters high antenna, so if I put this thing, this monster, 10 meters high up in, this, in, the, in the air, it hits the ground, the beam hits the ground on the same level at 56 meters away. A typical house with 10, maybe 20 meters, if you really are going ambitious, maybe you can, have, can set up a 30 meter mast. That means 150, 160, 165 meters away, your beam hits the ground. It's not even the 300 meters that that uh, recommended limit is. So uh, if you're in suburbia, I don't personally see an issue with doing this because you still get the gain. This is still an ADB antenna. So on the horizon, it's still going to be awesomely far, but it's not shooting over everything. It's shooting over your immediate neighbor or maybe two houses further. But after 150 meters, if you are 30 meters high, so 30 meters tower, after 150 meters, your beam hits the ground and you're good. I don't see that as overshooting. And that's why I say overshooting is a little bit overrated. Be careful about saying overshooting if you don't think that 20 degrees beam width with 10 degrees down is actually not that extreme. It's not a laser beam. Um, now, the next thing that, that comes out of this, the woodwork series, what is the issue with the high gain Omni? And it actually comes more from uh, the application we have in the 4G world and um, yeah, basically in the 4G world and UHF radios and so forth. The antenna needs to be straight. So this thing really does need to be upright. Then you know your elevation goes, goes nice to the horizon, all good and well. If it is at an angle, and I have some seen some photos of um, installations where guys just plonk this thing against the window uh, with a, with a, um, a window sucker, uh, uh, so some, some sucker or something, and it's just like that. It's not going to work. Yes, it might work a little bit because you're lucky and all that sort of stuff. But if you actually look at what's happening, you see there that the whole thing goes sideways. So the beam goes up and this one goes down. So you have a problem on both sides of your antenna. The only place where you don't have a problem, if, if I look at the screen, either this, that could be okay. So you won't notice this between me and, and the um, camera that I'm facing. But 
if I basically have a user here or here, whatever, I had a user here. If I do the antenna this, I'm going to miss him, and the other guy that's on the horizon also going to miss it. So don't want to do that. Um, as I said earlier, the, the where it is an issue, and this is in the 4G world, and this is in the UHF world, is you don't want a ultra high gain antenna such as this to be on a vehicle because the vehicle is not standing still. It's not always the same. You can't control the elevation because if it goes up a hill, the antenna will slope like this, and then you could have a problem. The boat in a marine environment where we often have this problem, we go for lower gain antennas because in a boat, the thing won't be stable and it keeps swaying. And if the antenna gain is too high, you may miss your um, connection every now and again, and it genuinely happens. So it's genuinely concerning that type of application. Um, I actually already covered this one. Will a high gain antenna make a difference? As I said, yes, it will. Um, the transmit power is limited, but your receive sensitivity always gets a better um, performance out of a high gain antenna. That's it. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you have any questions, let us know. Otherwise, see you on the next video. Bye bye.